A Description of the Morning by Jonathan Swift Read for LibriVox.org by E. Pline Now hardly here and there a hackney coach appearing Showed the ruddy morn's approach. Now Betty from her master's bed had flown And softly stole to discompose her own. The slipshod prentice from his master's door Had pared the dirt and sprinkled round the floor. Now Moll had whirled her mop with dexterous airs Prepared to scrub the entry and the stairs. The youth with broomy stumps began to trace The kennel edge where wheels had worn the place. The small coal-man was heard with cadence deep, Till drowned in shriller tones of chimney-sweep. Duns at his lordship's gate began to meet, And brick-dust Moll had screamed through half a street. The turnkey now his flock returning sees, Duly let out a night to steal for fees. The watchful bailiffs take their silent stands, And schoolboys lag with satchels in their hands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode on a Distant Prospect of Eton College by Thomas Gray Read for LibriVox.org by Jeanette Ferguson Ye distant spires, ye antique towers, that crown the watery glade, where grateful science still adores her Henry's holy shade, and ye that from the stately brow of Windsor's heights the expanse below, of grove, of lawn, of mead survey, whose turf, whose shade, whose flowers among, wanders the hoary Thames along his silver winding way. Ah, happy hills, ah, pleasing shade, ah, fields beloved in vain, where once my careless childhood strayed, a stranger yet to pain. I feel the gales that from ye blow, a momentary bliss bestow, as waving fresh their gladsome wing, my weary soul they seem to soothe, and redolent of joy and youth to breathe a second spring. Say, Father Thames, for thou hast seen full many a sprightly race, disporting on thy margent green, the paths of pleasure trace, who foremost now delight to cleave with pliant arm thy glassy wave the captive linnet which enthrall what idle progeny succeed to chase the rolling circle's speed or urge the flying ball while some on earnest business bent their murmuring labours ply gainst graver hours that bring constraint to sweeten liberty some bold adventurers disdain the limits of their little reign, and unknown regions dare descry, still as they run they look behind, they hear a voice in every wind, and snatch a fearful joy. Gay hope is theirs by fancy fed, less pleasing when possessed, the tear forgot as soon as shed, the sunshine of the breast. There's buxom health of rosy hue, wild wit invention ever new, and lively cheer of vigor born, the thoughtless day, the easy night, the spirits pure, the slumbers light, that fly the approach of morn. Alas, regardless of their doom, the little victims play, no sense have they of ills to come, nor care beyond to-day, yet see how all around them wait, the ministers of human fate, and black misfortune's baleful train. Ah, show them where in ambush stand to seize their prey the murderous band. Ah, tell them they are men. These shall the fury passions tear, the vultures of the mind, disdainful anger, pallid fear, and shame that skulks behind. Or pining love shall waste their youth, or jealousy with rankling tooth, that inly gnaws the secret heart, and envy wan and faded care, grim visaged comfortless despair, and sorrow's piercing dart. Ambition this shall tempt to rise, then whirl the wretch from high, to better scorn a sacrifice, and grinning infamy. The stings of falsehood those shall try, and hard in kindness altered eye, that mocks the tear it forced to flow, and keen remorse with blood defiled, and moody madness laughing wild amid severest woe. Lo, in the vale of years beneath a grisly trooper seen, the painful family of death, more hideous than their queen. This racks the joints, this fires the veins, that every laboring sinew strains, those in the deeper vitals rage, 
low poverty to fill the band that numbs the soul with icy hand and slow consuming age to each his sufferings all are men condemned alike to groan the tender for another's pain the unfeeling for his own yet ah why should they know their fate since sorrow never comes too late and happiness too swiftly flies thought would destroy their paradise no more where ignorance is bliss tis folly to be wise end of poem this recording is in the public domain Dust by Dorothy Anderson, read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. What is dust? Ashes of love, charred letters, faded heliotrope, rose petals fallen from a dead hand, spiders, bats, deserted houses, crumbling citadels, and wheel ruts where vanished armies have passed. Is that all? Oh. Dust is sun and laughter, circuses, parasols, preening pigeons, lovers picnicking by the roadside, and ragamuffins tumbling in the warm lanes. Dust is rainbow webs caught in sweet, hot-smelling hedges, and it is dust that keeps my eyes from being blinded by the stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Here Lies an Honest Man by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Here lies an honest man, Rear Admiral Van. Fit then ye have, two in one grave, For in his favor here too lies the engraver. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Hymn of Cleanthes by Cleanthes the Stoic Read for LibriVox.org by Leon Meyer Chiefest glory of deathless gods, almighty forever, Sovereign of nature that rulest by law, What name shall we give thee? Blessed be thou, for on thee should call all things that are mortal. For that we are thine offspring, nay, all that in myriad motion lives for its day on the earth bears one impress, thy likeness, upon it. Wherefore my song is of thee, and I hymn thy power for ever. Lo, the vast orb of the worlds, round the earth evermore as it rolleth, feels thee its ruler and guide and owns thy lordship rejoicing. I, for thy conquering hands, have a servant of living fire, sharp as the bolt. Where it falls, nature shrinks at the shock, and doth shudder. Thus thou directest the word universal that pulses through all things, mingling its life with lights that are great, and lights that are lesser. Eden as beseemeth its birth, high king through ages unending. Naught is done that is done without thee in the earth, or the waters, or in the heights of heaven, save the deed of the fool and the sinner. Thou canst make rough things smooth, at thy voice, low, jarring disorder, moveth to music, and love is born where hatred abounded. Thus hast thou fitted alike things good and things evil together, that over all might reign one reason supreme and eternal. Though thereunto the hearts of the wicked be hardened and headless, woe unto them, for while ever their hands are grasping at good things, blind are their eyes, yea, stopped are their ears, to God's law universal. Calling through wise obedience to live the life that is noble, this they mark not, but heedless of right, turn each to his own way. Here, a heart fired with ambition, in strife and straining unhallowed, there, thrusting honor aside, fast set upon getting and gaining, others again, given over to lusts and dissolute softness, working never God's law, 
but that which warreth upon it. Nay, but, O giver of all things good, whose home is the dark cloud, thou that wieldest heaven's bolt, save men from their ignorance grievous, scatter its night from their souls, and grant them to come to that wisdom, wherewithal, sistered with justice, thou rulest and governest all things, that we, honored by thee, may requite thee with worship and honor, evermore praising thy works, as is meet for men that shall perish, seeing that none, be he mortal or God, hath privilege nobler than without stint, without stay, to extol thy law universal. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I sailed up a river with a pleasant wind by Henry David Thoreau. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I sailed the river with a pleasant wind, new lands, new people, and new thoughts to find. Many fair reaches and hands appeared, and many dangers were there to be feared. When I remembered where I had been, and the fair landscapes that I had seen, thou seemest the only permanent shore, the cape never rounded, nor wandered o'er. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Shadows by E. Pauline Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Betsy Bush In Marquette, Michigan, May 2007 In the Shadows I am sailing to the leeward Where the current runs to seaward Soft and slow Where the sleeping river grasses Brush my paddle as it passes To and fro On the shore the heat is shaking All the golden sands awaking In the cove And the quaint sandpiper Winging o'er the shallows Ceases singing when I move on the water's idle pillow sleeps the overhanging willow, green and cool, where the rushes lift their burnished oval heads from out the tarnished emerald pool, where the very silence slumbers, water lilies grow in numbers, pure and pale. All the morning they have rested, amber crowned and pearly crested, fair and frail. Here impossible romances, indefinable sweet fancies, cluster round, but they do not mar the sweetness of this still September fleetness with a sound. I can scarce discern the meeting of the shore and the stream retreating, so remote, for the laggard river dozing only wakes from its reposing where I float. Where the river mists are rising, all the foliage baptizing with their spray. There the sun gleams far and faintly, with a shadow soft and saintly in its ray. And the perfume of some burning far-off brushwood, ever turning to exhale, all its smoky fragrance dying, in the arms of evening lying where I sail. My canoe is growing lazy, in the atmosphere so hazy, while I dream. Half in slumber I am guiding, eastward indistinctly gliding down the stream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Inward Morning by Henry David Thoreau For LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Packed in my mind lie all the clothes which outward nature wears, and in its fashion's hourly change it all things else repairs. In vain I look for change abroad, and can no difference find, till some new ray of peace uncalled illumes my inmost mind. What is it gilds the trees and clouds, 
and paints the heavens so gray but yonder fast abiding light with its unchanging ray lo when the sun streams through the wood upon a winter's morn where e'er his silent beams intrude the murky night is gone how could the patient pine have known the morning breeze would come humble flowers anticipate the insect's noonday hum till the new light with the morning cheer from far streamed through the aisles and nimbly told the forest tree for many stretching miles i've heard within my inner soul such cheerful morning news in the horizon of my mind have seen such orient hues as in the twilight of the dawn when the first birds awake are heard within some silent wood where they the small twigs break or in the eastern skies are seen before the sun appears the harbingers of summer heats which from afar he bears End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Low Anchored Cloud by Henry David Thoreau. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Low Anchored Cloud, Newfoundland Air. Fountainhead and source of rivers, dewcloth, dream drapery, and napkin spread by fays, drifting meadow of the air, where bloom the daisied banks and violets, and in whose fenny labyrinth the bittern booms and heron wades, spirit of lakes and seas and rivers, bear only perfumes and the scent of healing herbs to just men's fields end of poem this recording is in the public domain man's little acts are grand by henry david thoreau read for LibriVox.org by alan davis drake man's little acts are grand beheld from land to land there as they lie in time within their native clime ships with the noontide way and glide befray to some retired bay their haunt whence under tropic sun again they run bearing gum senegal and tragicant for this was ocean meant for this the sun was sent and the moon was lent and winds in distant caverns pent end of poem this recording is in the public domain the river merchant's wife a letter by ezra pound Recorded for LibriVox.org by Paul Z. Hong Kong While my hair was still cut straight across my forehead, I played about the front gate, pulling flowers. You came by on bamboo stilts, playing horse. You walked about my seat, playing with blue plums. And we went on living in the village of Chokan, two small people without dislike or suspicion. At fourteen, I married my lord you. I never laughed, being bashful. Lowering my head, I looked at the wall, called to a thousand times. I never looked back. At fifteen, I stopped scowling. I desired my dust to be mingled with yours forever and forever and forever why should i climb the lookout at sixteen you departed you went into far ku to yen by the river of swirling eddies 
and you have been gone five months. The monkeys make sorrowful noise overhead. You dragged your feet when you went out. By the gate now, the moss is grown. The different mosses, too deep to clear them away. The leaves fall early this autumn in wind. The paired butterflies are already yellow with August over the grass in the west garden. They hurt me. I grow older. If you're coming down through the narrows of the river, please let me know beforehand, and I will come out to meet you, as far as Chou Fu Sa. From the Chinese of Li Po. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Modern Love, Thirty, by George Meredith, read for LibriVox.org. What are we first? First, animals. And next, intelligences at a leap, on whom pale lies the distant shadow of the tomb, and all that draweth on the tomb for text. Into which state comes love, the crowning sun, beneath whose light the shadow loses form? We are the lords of life, and life is warm. Intelligence and instinct now are one. But nature says, my children most they seem when they least know me, therefore I decree that they shall suffer. Swift doth young love flee, and we stand wakened, shivering from our dream. Then, if we study nature, we are wise. Thus do the few who live but with the day, the scientific animals are they. Lady, this is my sonnet to your eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Moon by Henry David Thoreau. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Time wears her not, she doth his chariot guide, Mortality below her orb is placed. Raleigh The full-orbed moon with unchanged ray Mounts up the eastern sky, Not doomed to these short nights for a, But shining steadily. She does not wane, but my fortune which her rays do not bless, my wayward path declineth soon, but she shines not the less. And if she faintly glimmers here, and pale is her light, yet always in her proper sphere she's mistress of the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Resemblance by Winifred Wells, read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett. I have on mine no likeness to your fairy queen-like face, no sign in all my body of any of your grace. I might have been a changeling, as well as been a son, as to grow up your daughter and look like any one. But where your two breasts parted, a small mark darkened you. And over my heart's beating, I have the same scar, too. A little seal and golden, whereby it shall be known that you have shaped and borne me, and stamped me as your own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Riddle by Hannah Moore Read for LibriVox.org by Corrie Samuel I'm a strange contradiction, 
I'm new and I'm old. I'm often in tatters, and oft decked with gold. Though I never could read, yet lettered I'm found. Though blind I enlighten, though loose I am bound. I'm always in black, and I'm always in white. I'm grave, and I'm gay, I am heavy and light. In numbers I vary, I'm eight and I'm four, And though I am twelve, I can't reach half a score. In form too I differ, I'm thick and I'm thin, I've no flesh and no bone, yet I'm covered with skin. I've more points than the compass, more stops than the flute, I sing without voice, without speaking confute. I'm English, I'm German, I'm French and I'm Dutch, Some love me too fondly, some slight me too much. I often die soon, though I sometimes live ages, And no monarch alive has so many pages. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song by Thomas Babington Macaulay Read for LibriVox.org by Kristen Hughes O oh, stay, Madonna, stay! Tis not the dawn of day that marks the skies with yonder opal streak. The stars in silence shine, then press thy lips to mine, and rest upon my neck thy fervid cheek. O oh, sleep, Madonna, sleep! Leave me to watch and weep o'er the sad memory of departed joys, or hope's extinguished beam, or fancy's vanished dream, or all that nature gives and man destroys. Awake, oh, Madonna, wake! Even now the purple lake is dappled o'er with amber flakes of light. A glow is on the hill, and every trickling rill in golden threads leaps down from yonder height. O oh, fly, Madonna, fly, lest day and envy spy what only love and night may safely know. Fly and tread softly, dear, lest those who hate us hear the sounds of thy light footsteps as they go. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song of Myself Section 8 by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The little one sleeps in its cradle. I lift the gauze and look a long time and silently brush away flies with my hand. The youngster and the red-faced girl turn aside up the bushy hill. I, peeringly, view them from the top. The suicide sprawls on the bloody floor of the bedroom. I witness the corpse with its dabbled hair. I note where the pistol has fallen. The blab of the pave, tires of carts, slough of boot soles, talk of the promenaders. The heavy omnibus, the driver with its interrogating thumb, the clank of the shod horses on the granite floor. The slow sleighs, clinking, shouted jokes, pelts of snowballs. The hurrahs for popular favorites, the flap of the curtained litter, a sick man inside, borne to the hospital. The meeting of enemies, the sudden oath, the blows and fall. The excited crowd, the policeman with his star quickly working his passage, to the center of the crowd. The impassive stones that receive and return so many echoes. What groans of overfed or half-starved, who fall sunstruck or in fits. What exclamations of women taken suddenly who hurry home and give birth to babes. What living and buried speech is always vibrating here. What howls restrained by decorum. Arrests of criminals, slights, adulterous offers made, acceptances, rejections with convex lips. I mind them, or the show, or resonance of them. I come, and I depart.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. To find out more about LibriVox or to volunteer for this special project, please visit LibriVox.org. That's L I B R I V O X dot O R G. You are listening to Terence This Is Stupid Stuff by A. E. Hausman. Read by Matthew Bodie. Terence, this is stupid stuff. You eat your vittles fast enough. There can't be much amiss, tis clear, to see the rate you drink your beer. But, oh, good Lord, the verse you make, it gives a chap the bellyache. The cow, the old cow, she is dead. It sleeps well, the horned head. We poor lads, tis our turn now, to hear such tunes as killed the cow. Pretty friendship, tis to rhyme, your friends to death before their time, moping melancholy mad. Come pipe a tune to dance to, lad. Why, if tis dancing you would be, there's brisker pipes than poetry. Say, for what were hop-yards meant, or why was Burton built on Trent? Oh, many a peer of England brews, livelier liquor than the muse, and malt does more than Milton can to justify God's way to man. Ale, man ails the stuff to drink, for fellows whom it hurts to think. Look into the pewter pot to see the world as the world's not. And faith, tis pleasant till tis past. The mischief is that twill not last. Oh, I have been to Ludlow Fair and left my necktie God knows where and carried halfway home or near pints and quarts of Ludlow beer. Then the world seemed none so bad and I myself, a sterling lad, and down in lovely muck I've lain, happy till I woke again, then I saw the morning sky. I ho, the tale was all a lie. The world, it was the old world yet. I was I. My things were wet. And nothing now remained to do but begin the game anew. Therefore, since the world has still much good, but much less good than ill, and while the sun and moon endure, luck's a chance, but trouble's sure, I'd find it as a wise man would, and train for ill and not for good. Tis true the stuff I bring for sale is not so brisk a brew as ale. Out of a stem that scored the hand I wrung it in a weary land. But take it if the smack is sour, the better for the embittered hour. It should do good to heart and head when your soul is in my soul's stead. And I will friend you, if I may, in the dark and cloudy day. There was a king reigned in the east. There, when kings will sit to feast, they get their fill before they think, with poison meat and poison drink. He gathered all the springs to birth from the many venomed earth. First a little, thence to more, he sampled all her killing store. An easy, smiling, seasoned sound, sate the king when health went round. They put arsenic in his meat and stared aghast to watch him eat. They poured strychnine in his cup and shook to see him drink it up. They shook, they stared as white's their shirt. Them it was their poison hurt. I tell the tale that I heard told. Mithridates, he died old. End of poem. You have been listening to a LibriVox recording of Terence This Is Stupid Stuff by A. E. Houseman, read by Matthew Bodie. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. The Trees in the Garden Rain to Flowers by Stephen Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The Trees in the Garden Rained Flowers Children ran there joyously. They gathered the flowers, each to himself. Now there were some who gathered great heaps, having opportunity and skill, until, behold, only chance blossoms remained for the feeble. Then a little spindling tutor ran importantly to the father, crying, Pray, come hither, see this unjust thing in your garden. But when the father had surveyed, he admonished the tutor. 
not so small sage this thing is just for look you are not they who possess the flowers stronger bolder shrewder than they who have none why should the strong the beautiful strong why should they not have the flowers upon reflection the tutor bowed to the ground my lord he said the stars are displaced by this towering wisdom end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Western Wind Came Lumbering In by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The Western Wind Came Lumbering In, Bearing a Faint Pacific Din. Our Evening Mail, Swift at the Call of its Postmaster General, Laden with News from California, what e'er transpired hath since morn how wags the world by briar and brake from hence to athabasca lake end of poem this recording is in the public domain